Hi folks, welcome back to my review of Super Mario Brothers the movie. This is part two of the movie, so if you haven't already seen part one, you might want to check that out before watching the rest of this one. Anyway, last time we left off with Mario and Luigi getting arrested by some Koopas. There's one of them. And they were being taken away to meet with Bowser, who you're about to see in a few seconds. You know, I bet you're looking forward to this. I mean, let's face it, he is the original video game bad guy. And there he is. That's right. This is what the makers of this movie say Bowser would look like in real life. Now, let's just compare th what he looks like here to what he looks like in the games. Game. Movie. Game. Movie. Game. Movie. Now, I'm no expert on costume design but I'm pretty sure that I would be able to design a better Bowser costume than this. In fact, I'm absolutely certain that I could design a better Bowser costume than this. In fact, here, I'll prove it for you. Now, here is a child's Ninja Turtle costume. I had one of these as a kid. I think they cost around about 10 or 12 pounds, probably about 15 dollars, not sure. God, I wish I still had this. But anyway, I'm just going to use my awesome Microsoft Paint talents to add in some horns. And now, just to complete the illusion, some fire. There we go. Perfect. And now the illusion is complete. There you have Bowser. Okay, I admit, that sucks. I have no idea how to use Microsoft Paint. Anyway, but you have to at least admit that it looks more like Bowser than this guy. I mean, he also has the single gayest walk I've ever seen. I mean, look at it. And whenever you remember that this is what the Koopas look like in it, you'll find yourself wondering, did they even have a costume department for this movie? And I'm afraid to say that, unfortunately, the answer is yes. And whenever you see how the costumed characters look, you'll realize why they didn't bother with most of the other characters because it really does look absolutely awful. Now, here in this scene you'll see that Bowser is using his devolution machine to de-evolve our singing friend here into one of the more popular characters from the Mario series. Now, I'm gonna give you a quick look at him here, and I'm gonna just stay quiet for a while while you try and figure out what popular Mario villain this guy is meant to look like. I guarantee if you have not seen this movie before, you have no chance of figuring this out. Because he looks absolutely nothing like any Mario villain I've ever seen. Child of the royal family. Any ideas yet? Any at all? Go on, take another good look at him. Still no idea? I'll tell you what, I'll let Bowser tell you here. Go Goomba! Join the Goombas! No, I I'm sorry, what? Go Goomba! Join the Goombas! Now, I'm sorry, but I'm willing to use my imagination a bit, but there is absolutely no way in hell that that looks anything like a Goomba. Anyway, after that bit, we get to the part where Mario and Luigi try and escape by swinging on this pulley thing, while the Goombas try and shoot them down with their flamethrowers. Again, just like in the games, right? <laughs> anyway, then after they escape from the pulley things, they then have a car chase scene. You remember all those car chase scenes from the Mario games, right? Well, they've included that in the movie as well. Moving on, I think now is about as good a time as any to describe what the deal is with that meteorite shard. Although, I really do feel like a complete idiot any time I try and describe this. So, I'm just gonna let the cast of the movie do it for me. I mean, at least they got paid to sound like idiots. The rock is a piece of a special meteorite which was chipped off upon impact 65 million years ago. Yes, you see, once this rock is reinserted into the meteorite, our two dimensions will reunite and we will become one. Then our cousin Koopa shall become ruler of both our worlds. <laughs> I don't get it. Trust me, you don't want to, Mario. 
Also, another plot development at this point in the movie is that Bowser used his devolution machine to turn Daisy's father into a big giant fungus that has now spread throughout the Mushroom Kingdom. And as a result of that, he does keep saving Mario and Luigi's ass at various points throughout the movie. Anyway, one thing I don't think I've mentioned yet is that, as well as an absolutely atrocious plot, this movie has some of the worst dialogue you will ever hear in any movie, ever. I mean, here is the very first line from the movie. A long, long time ago, the Earth was ruled by dinosaurs. They were big, so not a lot of people went around hassling them. Okay, that's pretty bad, but that's nothing compared to some of the lines Bowser has. I mean, here's his amazing put-down to the now fungicized king. You always wanted to be everywhere? Well, now you are. You always wanted to be everywhere. Well, now you are. I gotta say, some of this movie's dialogue is sickeningly bad. Really, really is. And that's not the worst of it. I mean, here, just listen to some of this slot. King Koopa here. Oh, yes, sir. I'd like the Koopa special. Pterodactyl tail on that? Yes. Dino, lizard, hold the mammal, no worms, and, uh, spicy. I got you! Help! Luigi, help me! The cat's home, Mario? I should try out for the Yankees. Wow, there were dinosaurs in Brooklyn? The name's Mario. I'm your main man. You can do that. I've been sitting on my butt all day playing video games, that's why. Breath. Where's the rock, overweening rogue? Not until you give us Daisy Biscuit Head! What? Dance with me. I'll hit you all you like. And now, my personal favorite. Trust the fungus. Oh dear Trust God. Oh yeah, and one thing I forgot to mention is that uh, Yoshi's in this movie. And despite the ridiculousness of the rest of the movie, they actually seem to have stayed pretty loyal to the games with Yoshi. I mean, no one goes around riding on his back or anything, but, you know, he's a dinosaur, and he's got his big giant stretchy tongue. So, yeah, Yoshi in this movie is actually pretty cool. Which makes it all the more baffling that they, you know, remove him from the movie by having him getting stabbed in the neck by a shoe. That's right, Yoshi is beaten by a girl with a shoe. So now you know how bad the beginning and middle of this movie is. But can the ending live up to the extreme awfulness of the rest of the movie so far? To find out, join me in part three of my review of Super Mario Brothers the movie. Trust the fungus. Trust the fungus.